been a while since I've posted a video, but I thought today would be a good one because I'm scheduled an MRI, which is different from the regular ORs. And my anesthesiologist assistants also work in offsite locations, such as endoscopy, where you do your EGDs and colonoscopies. But in addition to that, we are also in MRI, CT, and interventional radiology. Sometimes patients will need anesthesia for those procedures. Yeah, so I'll show you guys what it's like down there, what the rooms look like, how it's different, how it's similar. Let's go. Every morning I change into scrubs provided by the hospital. This is my locker where I put all my belongings. Um, yes, don't judge me. I know I have to return these dirty scrubs, but I just haven't had the time. These are some new ones that we're gonna wear today. The smallest scrub size they have is extra small. I usually wear it over my sports bra and leggings. Yes, this is an extra small. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys what I carry in my pockets every day. First is this Vaseline lip therapy. Second is a really nice pen for charting and signing papers. And third are my AirPods to use during breaks. After I change into scrubs, I go put my lunchbox in the break room. This order of business is getting drugs from the Omnicell. Not all hospitals will have these. Sometimes you have to go to a physical pharmacy to get your drugs. Others, you can have a Pixis machine in every OR room. These are some of the typical drugs that we will initially get called our controlled substances, which is propofol, fentanyl, Versed, and Dilaudid. Our pharmacy puts them in these pre-made kits, which is sufficient enough to start a general case. Once you check out any controlled substances, the machine will print out a receipt so that pharmacy can keep track of everything. The next thing we're gonna grab is the anesthesia blue tray. The blue tray has drugs such as phenylephrine, ephedrine, glycopyrrolate, neostigmine, epinephrine. This one's technically white, whatever. Because our patients are a lot sicker, I like to have a phenylephrine drip to keep a patient's blood pressure up if they can't maintain it. And a norepi drip for backup just in case the phenylephrine is not enough. Now that I have all the drugs that I need for the case, we're gonna make our way to the MRI suite. So there are a couple of things to know about off-site anesthesia. Number one, the location is usually far away from everyone. As you can see, I'm still walking to MRI. It's on a completely different floor. If you need additional supplies or help, it may take longer to get to you. Number two, even though the rooms will have the basic anesthesia equipment necessary to start each case, it's gonna be in a different orientation that you normally see in the OR. Because of this, some anesthesia providers don't like it, don't like to be down here. But once you become familiar with the environment and how things flow, it's not so bad. Nurses and techs who consistently work there are extremely helpful and super nice. So if you are unsure of where anything is located, ask them. I'm going to give you a little tour of the MRI room. So this is the MRI machine and don't bring anything metal into this room or else it'll get sucked to the machine. First is your anesthesia cart. This has all your airway supplies. Back there is your anesthesia machine, which helps ventilate the patient. This is the MRI bed and the patient lays here. I'm gonna give you a more detailed look at the MRI cart. So because there's no metal allowed in the room, there are special Mac and Miller blades that are MRI safe. And the anesthesia cart just has other drugs, airway supplies, LMAs, endotracheal tubes, tape, tongue depressors, oral airways, nasal airways, IV A-line supplies, syringes for your drugs. Pretty much everything you would need is in the anesthesia cart. For this case, this patient only needs 500cc bag of fluids. It's a shorter case, about 30 to 45 minutes long. 
we're gonna grab this manifold tubing to connect to the IV. I'm gonna show you guys how to prime the line. So you gotta remove both items from the plastic packaging and then remove the rubber and plastic covers. Prime the IV tubing by spiking the bag. Once you have it inserted all the way, be sure to close off, clamp, or kink the tubing so that you can squeeze and fill up the chamber. Once the chamber is partially filled, which prevents air from entraining, release the tubing and watch the fluids travel all the way through. When the fluids go all the way to the end of the tubing, you can close it off at the stopcock or the roller clamp. You have your standard ASA monitors, pulse socks, EKG, and blood pressure cuff. These are wireless and they use MRI safe batteries. Kind of cool, a little different from the OR. This is the finger probe that connects to the pulse ox. The MRI uses a 4-lead EKG monitor instead of the traditional 3 or 5-lead. These are the stickers. You have your green, your white, your black, and your red. The vitals transmit to this monitor here via Bluetooth. You have your EKG, pulse ox, end tidal CO2 waveform, and then your blood pressure. First case of today is the MRI scan of the abdomen. He needs sedation due to his claustrophobia. Typical drugs we use for sedation, fentanyl, midazolam, or versed, propofol if they need a deeper sleep. Now that I have my room set up, drugs are drawn up, it's 9.45, I'm gonna bring the patient back. Once the patient's back into the room, we hook up the monitors to the patient, give them three liters O2 via nasal cannula, position them for the MRI scan, and start giving them drugs and titrate it so that they're comfortable. Fortunately, we have to paper chart at these off-site locations. You can see here their blood pressure, pretty stable so far. They have to follow our instructions during the scans. You go ahead and take a breath in and hold your breath, don't breathe. Take another breath in, hold your breath, don't breathe. It's 11 o'clock, my colleague just relieved me. We were finishing up in the scan and he ended up getting three of her said 150 of fentanyl and um, that was pretty much it. So yeah, he's doing great. I'm gonna go to recovery area, wait there for a little bit, and then he'll get to go home shortly after. It's 12 o'clock now. We're gonna start the second case of the day, which is the MRI of the lumbar spine. When you look up a patient, you look at their allergies, shellfish and Lipitor in this case, her past medical history, obesity, OSA uses a CPAP, hypertension and has had a hernia, osteoarthritis and low back pain, as well as claustrophobia. We're getting the scan for the lower back pain. The patient has had the scan done multiple times prior and in her previous records, they show that she actually requires a propofol infusion. Another alternative is Presidex, which is great if you want to sedate the patient without worrying about apnea. Some side effects are bradycardia. 12.35 now, case has started. I've given three of Versed, 30 of ketamine, and started the propofol infusion at 30 mics per K per minute. Blood pressure tends to drop under anesthesia as you can see the downtrend here in the graph. I'm gonna give 100 mics of phenylephrine to bring the blood pressure back up. And here we are closer to baseline. It's been 45 minutes and we're done with the case. These are the drug totals. We're on to case number three, which is a cerebral angiogram. This is done in interventional radiology and not MRI. This patient has had an acute subarachnoid hemorrhage, possible ruptured aneurysm. They're going to want to take some images of the vessels in the brain to see if they can embolize the aneurysm. If not, the patient's going to go to the OR. This is the neurointerventional radiology room. 
Notice how different this room looks compared to MRI. The patient lays on this table and the head is oriented to the right. This table can rotate 90 degrees, which brings the head closer to the anesthesia machine where you can manage the airway, intubate. Once the airway is secured, the table will rotate back to its original position. There are a couple things to be mindful of in all off-site anesthesia locations. You gotta make sure that your circuit has enough length to make it from the patient to the machine. You can see here it's long distance compared to what it is in the OR. You also have to make sure your IV fluids, lines, and cables have extensions. This table moves all the way to the left and to the right. The C-arm rotates as well, so you have to be mindful everything doesn't get caught or get pulled. This is the IR anesthesia cart. Notice how it's different from the cart in MRI, but it's got all the same supplies that you would need. They're just located in different drawers. You have to be familiar where things are located or else in case of an emergency, you'll be spending some time looking for the items. Another thing that is special to IR is that you have to wear lead to protect yourself from the radiation. Some hospitals will provide lead for everyone to share and other hospitals will allow CME money so you can buy your own lead. They have lots of designs, sizes, and styles, but can be expensive. On top of the lead, you can stand behind these shields to protect yourself from the radiation as well. Before we start the third case, I need to set it up real quick. We're going to get out some syringes for drugs. Inside the IV kit is a stat lock, chlorhexidine, 4x4s, tegaderm, tourniquet, IV catheters. I like to have two sizes for backup and a flush syringe. I gather everything and tuck it inside this packet, and voila, here you go. Even though it's just a sedation case, you still need an emergency airway setup. I'm gonna set out a 7.0 endotracheal tube. We have to check the cuff's integrity, so you need a 10cc syringe. Open it up, grab the pilot balloon, which is this blue thing right here. Connect it. Pull out all of the air and watch the cuff deflate. Add 6 to 8 cc's of air, watch it inflate, check for any leaks, and then deflate. Next is a MAC 3 blade. To check the laryngoscope handle light source, you connect it together and then make sure the light is nice and bright, not dim. I tape to protect the patient's eyes when they're under anesthesia. Patients obstructing an oral airway will help with bag mass. You can use it with a tongue depressor. This temp probe to measure a patient's body temperature. Lastly, to secure the endotracheal tube, you have this orange pink tape as well as this clear tape. All right, I've brought the patient back. She's nice and comfortable. So far, I've given 0.5 reverse ed and 50 mics of fentanyl. The case ended about two hours later and we are transporting the patient back to ICU. They decided they can't treat it or embolize it, so we're going to go to the OR. Um, one of my colleagues is setting it up right now. 6.45 right now, a lot of the cases upstairs ended early, so they're going to send me home. My colleague is going to take over and start the aneurysm in the OR. Today was an easier day than most. I only did three sedation cases. Thanks for watching! Follow me on Instagram at Anesthesia Sal. I'm a little more active here and post things throughout the day about my work life. If you want the inside scoop about anesthesiologist assistants, join the Discord group. There are a lot of different channels that you can read about.